I have to say, I find it strangely fitting that the night before I give up all control of my art is marked by an elegant yet chaotic thunderstorm. As a child, I was always deeply curious yet completely terrified at the same time of storms. In the steamy summers, these monsters would seem to just sneak up on our small little house without any warning and plummel us with vicious strength. I remember as a child watching out my bedroom window in awe how quickly the skies could turn violent at any given moment. I felt completely helpless as those thunderous beasts billowed outside of my window. So to ease my fears, I would sit inside of my closet with my clothes completely enveloping my small form, and inside I would reach for a small box tucked very tightly away towards the back. In it, I would sift through its continents and really distract myself from the raging storm outside. So why am I telling you the story of a small little girl in a long forgotten storm? Well, just like the storm from my childhood, this particular illustration seemed to go quite smoothly at the beginning, but then suddenly and chaotically went completely awry and out of my control. That being said, just like when I was a little girl, whether we realize it or not, we do have some element of control, even when the world seems like it's chaotically running amok. And for this particular illustration, I would definitely have to heavily rely on those elements of control in order to solve my greatest blunder. But before I get into that, I have to backtrack to where this all began. The special thing that's happening on Instagram is actually all of you are going to be helping me plan for this coming Sunday's future video. And basically what you're gonna be voting on is different supplies and different techniques that I'm gonna use and even the size of the painting and all of that good stuff. So basically I am giving all control to you. So here's the breakdown. When I usually approach a painting, I consider five different basic elements. First, I determine my main focal point. It's usually an animal. Second, I decide what size the illustration should be, whether large or small. Third, I decide the overall temperature of the piece, such as a warm color palette or a cool color palette. Fourth, I decide on the actual paint colors that I want to use, and usually I choose between a minimal paint palette, such as seven colors, to a very complex color palette, which could be 20. And finally, as always, I like to include a new texture or technique to test out and try in a painting. And usually I make that decision based on what I feel is best for the piece itself. 
So these are usually the choices that I have absolutely full control over when I'm planning and executing a piece of art, especially for this channel. Okay, so now that I know what my fans want, it's time for me to develop a game plan. create a drawing fast. I then need to choose seven colors that will work together, yet can create all the colors that I actually desire for this painting. Oh, and I need to figure out how to use salt and iridescent texture in this painting, which I usually don't use salt, so this might be a little bit of a stretch. Now. I've gotta say, my first blender happened quite early on. You see, I was using a new masking film and tested it on several smaller projects, and it worked fine on a smaller scale with little water, but it nearly ruined my larger painting. Without notice, even after I had secured its edges with masking fluid as you see here, the seams began to pull up on the film from the paper allowing the unwanted color to sneak inside. Now since I was using staining colors, I had little choice but to accept my fate and try to incorporate the blender. No worries, I thought, I can do this. I'll just have to make the painting darker to cover up the goof. I have to say, by this point, I was feeling pretty confident in myself. The game plan was flowing smoothly and all was well. Little did I know, my greatest blunder was just around the corner. You see, I decided to push myself and try something completely new since y'all had voted for me to paint iridescent in this painting. Now, I do have iridescent paint, but I thought it'd be really cool if I just added some iridescent film to the stars of this painting. Without much thought and without testing it first, I reached for the film and with gilding solution secured the film to my dainty little stars. The problem was when I stood back and looked at what I had just done, I realized I had made a really big goof. The iridescent film was more of a pinkish hue, which was not what I originally thought. I thought it was more of a yellow hue and as a result, it was throwing off the entire palette or a color theme of my painting. Instead of your eyes kind of focusing on the piece as a whole, your eyes immediately just beelined to where I had placed the iridescent film. Now, while this was a great idea and I actually might use this in the future, the color choice was not a wise one on my part. So I made the split second decision to undo this iridescent effect and that is when my greatest blunder happened. Now I had to take a step back and reevaluate. I could either leave the iridescent exactly where it is and just accept it as fate, or 
I could come up with a new plan and try to cover up my greatest blunder. After looking at the piece for a little bit, I decided the thing to do was to creatively come up with a new plan. Since my paper was ripped, I would have to add an element of texture to it to try and cover up that torn paper. Gold foil could actually easily add the texture that I wanted and cover up that blender. Plus, it would keep with that theme of the paper stars kind of glistening in the background. So this meant I was going to have to break the rules a little bit to fix my blunder. I was going to have to use gold as well as iridescent in this painting. So I added the gold foil to the torn paper and then placed iridescent paint on top to help cool down that gold color as well as to help solidify it to the paper. Now, getting back to the story of the girl in the box at the beginning, just like this little girl, we can't always control all the pieces of the puzzle called life. But there are always three things that we can control when facing our metaphorical storms. The first thing that we can always control is our attitude towards the situation. Just like with the painting, I had no control over the choices that were made but I could develop a game plan of how to attack those choices with the greatest potential of success. Second, we need to realize that no matter how hard you plan, you are going to have pitfalls and hurdles that come across your way. So don't panic, rather put your creative cap on and reinvent the plan to work with these new hurdles. Just like me when the worst case scenario happened and I ripped my watercolor paper. And third, get some distance and gain some perspective. Sometimes the best thing to do when you're in a bind is take a step back and reevaluate the picture as a whole. I honestly can't tell you how many times I stood up on my chair in my art studio looking like probably a complete fool to try and get a better view of my painting. This helped me to judge what was going wrong, what was going right, and also how the piece was fitting together as a whole. Now, before I leave, I've left a poll once again for you to complete. Let me know which of the above elements is your favorite whether it's attitude, ingenuity, and perspective. Then in the comments down below, tell me why you absolutely love that element. I have to say for me, it's ingenuity. Being able to face those dark moments and then create something beautiful in those moments is just fascinating to me. And usually when our best work as artists actually comes out. And that is how I painted an entire illustration based on your feedback from my fans. If you like this video, make sure to hit that like button and let me know you would like more videos on this particular topic, something similar to this, where you guys vote on what I paint. Also make sure to subscribe if you haven't already done so and hit the bell if you want to know when I upload new content. As always, y'all, it's been a pleasure and I will see you in the next video.